Aloha, Kako. Thank you, everybody, for hanging in. This has been a really big day of information, and I learned a lot already. And I, I really, I want to light a torch for to say thank you to all of the hard work that's gone into all of the support that you can't see it. There you go. <laughs> thank you for, yeah, everybody for all your hard work to get us this far. So I just want to quickly give a, a update on what's happening in legislation. Um, nationally, probably most people have heard the news that four more states have, <clears throat> have voted to legalize adult use and that was Arizona, South Dakota, New Jersey, and Montana. And then Mississippi added medical too. And as you know, we've, we just recently celebrated our 20 years of having accepted medical use of cannabis in Hawaii. Thanks to Dr. Otto and, and you, um, Brent. So locally, we had a bunch of bills that died from COVID back in March. And only one of those survived and was heard and passed. And that one will now allow our dispensaries to sell edibles. And, but we had some pretty nice bills that were making their way through the legislative session pretty well before COVID killed them. We had one that would provide employee protection so that employers couldn't refuse to hire patients just because they had cannabis in their blood and they couldn't fire them just for that reason either. We had one bill that would allow insurance companies to pay for the patient's medicine. We had another one that would provide regulations of CBD products and allow the hemp farmers to market tested products. We had a bill that would allow the dispensaries to provide delivery service. And that was um, when, when all those bills died, then a group of people got together to make appeals to the governor asking during COVID times, can we have delivery services and also expand the telehealth to include new patient certifications. And the governor denied both of those requests without giving any real reason why not. <clears throat> so, um, as Dr. Otto mentioned, what we're doing now is trying to get three more medical conditions added to the list of qualifying conditions, and that's anxiety, depression, and insomnia. And I worked on providing testimony for that, but it took me an entire week just to do anxiety, so I, I didn't have time to do the other ones. <laughs> But I'm hopeful that at least anxiety and insomnia <laughs> will pass because uh, I, I feel that there's pretty strong evidence for, for both of those to uh, present. There was also, we passed a decrim bill last year and it had a provision in it for a task force to check out the feasibility and uh, recommendability of legalizing marijuana for adult use and COVID um, <clears throat> and elections, I, I think, delayed the formation of that task force. And the legislators that we asked about it said, wait until after the election um, to, to ask again when we're going to meet. So I don't know if they have met already, but um, they're supposed to pr produce something by early next year. <clears throat> and they, um, in the past, the task forces have included Drug Policy Forum and Medical Cannabis Coalition at the table, but we weren't included in this task force. We're hoping to be involved just as consultants um, by invitation. <clears throat> and uh, the Drug Policy Forum is probably going to go into a partnership with the Clarity Project, that's the psilocybin project. And so we'll probably be expanding on what bills that we're gonna be working on uh, to include psychedelics. <clears throat> and um, I don't know what else um, to tell you. Oh, Project CBD is recruiting subjects for research. Uh, if you're using 
CBD to treat anxiety, they would like to hear from you. So check out Project CBD if you're one of those people. And uh, I think that's pretty much it as far as legislation. We, our legislative priorities for the drug policy include some of the same stuff that we've been working on for the past few years and making a little bit of headway. Things like um, bail reform and uh, civil asset forfeiture and just trying to reduce the, the mass incarceration problem that we have. And always working on patient protections in terms of we'll probably go back to the board to try to revive some of those bills the same the the employee protections if we can maybe to get some delivery service and we've also had a special request from some parents who have children who use cannabis and would like to see uh, it um, um, <clears throat> so that the school nurses can provide the medical cannabis to the children at school so that the children can attend school <laughs> instead of having to be homeschooled. And, and, and also to mitigate some of the harm that's being done, right, by other drugs that they are allowed to use, uh, Adderall, Ritalin, um, so harm reduction, right? Yes, and there's gonna be a harm reduction conference I believe it's going to be Jan either, I think it's going to usually in January in Hawaii, and it's going to be virtual, but they're going to include nursing CEUs for medical cannabis at the next harm reduction conference. That's great. And that's uh, continuing education units, CEUs. Yes, yes. Fantastic. Fantastic. So we're, we're making little bits of headway here and there on, on education. Um, but I'm hoping that we can use what you've produced here today to help educate some of our legislators about what's really happening, what the, sub, what the, what the patient issues really are, and how we, we might go forward. Yeah, thank you. And, and thanks for always being part of that state conversation, uh, like uh, Dr. Otto, you know, you. I, I know it's not easy and it's been, you know, a long ride, um, but your perseverance, uh, everyone's perseverance is going to pay off, um, even if we have to wait until, you know, we, we elect a new governor um, or until we get um, state actors in place that are compassionate um, and empathetic to patient needs. Um, the line of work, the, the path that we're all on following folks like Alice O'Leary Randall and Carl Olson, um, this work pays off in the end and, and we all know it, we're all driven to do it, so your perseverance, your tenacity is just, it, it, it humbles me to be in your presence. Oh. Oh, Brad, couldn't do it without you. This is wonderful. You're, you're helping educate, motivate, and activate people, and that's where it's at. That's what we need. Yeah, the more voices we can get to weigh in on this, the, the, the better.